Right, straight away I'm getting on with the Cupra. Uh, the main reason I am, normally I wouldn't try to, I was so busy at work, I've really pushed to get this in. But it's, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm seeing a long journey to Middlesbrough and back to me is long. Uh, as you know, we don't really travel too far out our way uh, in our free time and stuff. So, But to me, that's a long way to go in a car. I've never really driven anywhere. This, I've never even um, took, a, I, I took it up the road and back on a test drive. And I've drove it. I didn't even know. It was delivered on my drive. So I've, I've done... The only place I've driven this car was on a quick five-minute test drive with the guy I bought it off. And when I, when I drove it round to do the intro of it, that's it. So I've never driven it for long distance at speed. I've never been hardly anywhere in it. So I've got all this stuff here. I'm going to go through what we're going to be doing with it, starting at the front. What I've already done, new tyres. Rodex. I highly recommend these before anybody goes, oh, Chinese rubbish, ditch finders, all this kind of malarkey. I'm not 100% set with the wheels. They're okay, but I'm not 100% with them. So clearly, I'm not going to go putting a set of premium, premium brand tyres on. But these tyres, I will say, I'll just pause this now. Yep, over at the Renault, this is our garage car. This thing gets hammered day in, day out, and driven quite hard at that. And this has got the road X's on. And the date stamp on these are 2019. As you can see, they're getting slightly due renewal, renewal now. These have done 20,000 miles of winter, summer, hard use. And I think they have stood up very well. There's no perishing, no cracking, the odd little cut and tear from... I think the tracking's not perfect on this car. But as you can see, I really do rate these tyres. So for the money they've cost us, as recommended by Dan at Stake 4 Tyres, thank you very much. Uh, he got us a good deal on these because, like we're finding out of our parts, the prices have absolutely soared on those tyres. So luckily, they've done me a favour and done us a cracking price at the old rate. But unfortunately, I took the last two tyres. And you, and you want your back ones done as well. I really was tempted, but they are starting to crack and perish a bit. They're not great, but the tread on them is fine. Um, but the front ones were absolutely gone. But what my plan is, is I'm going to get two win if I If I keep the car and I use it long enough... I'm going to move them to the back and then come near the winter, get two winter tyres, replace them and stick them on the front. But yeah, so two new spanking new front tyres over the moon with them. Uh, to the front. I'm not going to touch this too much because this stuff's get, going to get all put in a bin. It's all falling to bits. Got the oil filter out. I've drained the oil out with the suction device because as I've mentioned, the sump plug is not great. But these suction devices, dealerships use them. And I'm telling you now, with those... I know these take exactly four and a half litres from empty and that's exactly what's come out. So we've got the new filter to go in. I've got the, I've, I'll go at the back, I'll show you what we're going to be doing. I've got the, the high flow air filter, not through choice, it was the fact that I already have a one. And I'm going to do the fuel filter, all just as, as precautionary stuff, purely because I've already got the stuff here and the cost, pen, cost me pennies. So, what have we got? Starting from the basics. Pollen filter, going to get that done. Fuel filter, nice Bosch one to go on. We'll get that done. That's the oil filter, which I need out now. Nice original equipment man one. The high flow air filter, like I say, it's a pipe across one. I had it in, uh, no, sorry, a ram air filter. I had it in one of my, I think it was a Skoda Octavia or something, VRS. Um, so that's to go in, in, I'm going to try it if I don't like it, if it makes it noisy or anything, it's coming off. Genuine Volkswagen oil. This is actually from Volkswagen, like uh, it's a Quantum. It's the proper Platinum 540 PD oil, which for these, for the PD engines, is 50501. Has to be that grade for these. And it's like a weird box of green. It's green oil. Uh, so that's going into it. Very important on a 50,000 mile PD. Gearbox oil, probably not get around to doing that the day. This fox <laughs> as you call it um this is actually what the dealerships use as well and this stuff is very very expensive it's actually they there i think they're wanting nearly 15 20 pound a liter for it i got the cracking deal on this on ebay uh for three liters so i'll be doing that because these gearboxes at higher mileage ragged about cars can be problem problematic mm -hmm. but i'm just going to get it done i've already shown you this it's the uh poly bush actually i haven't showed you it's a poly bushed dog bone mount which is like the gearbox mount. That'll come another day. I'll do that. Uh, again, that was from a previous car that I had. Um, let's put that down at one side. One of the intercooler pipes is weeping slightly. And I've gotten a seal. £10 for that thing. £10. The back brake discs, the, the shields on them, 
are starting to corrode, but they're actually a really big job because you've got to take all the hub and caliban, everything off. We'll see if I get a day where I'm free, we'll have a go doing those. They were only like um, 15 quid each from Volkswagen. So I've got a pair of those, got that seal there. Right, and like I mentioned about the timing case being smashed, I ordered this one in, uh, which is brand new from Volkswagen. Uh, but unfortunately, the piece where I thought was going to be on isn't. So unfortunately, the bit that's broken, that these idiots at this garage, uh, I'm, I'm debating whether to mention their name because just a few little things I've seen where they've worked on this car uh, is not very good whatsoever. Um, got a lot of thinking about to do with that. I'm going to try and cover the hole up for now and go from there. But I'm debating whether to send this uh, this back. It's, I think it's only 40 quid. Um, so that's that. What else have we got here? I did a little... I've uh, got to do some cleaning, so I resin polish, all that kind of stuff. And yes, as you already know, which I've mentioned on my previous video, I am an absolute sucker for wiper blades. And this car's no different. You've got a special backward hook, back wiper, but the ends are, as you can see, coming away. So a new back wiper. Nearly 10 quid for that, bugger. And the front wipers, as you all know, this is driving me insane and I'm actually going to do this straight away once I stop recording. They're meant to have a proper curved wiper blade and they aren't and that's why it's touching down here because they're meant to be a curved wiper. So they're the official Bosch ones. So I'm going to stick the Bosch wipers on front and back. I want this oil filter in as soon as possible because it's windy and there's crap blowing everywhere and I don't want nothing getting into that oil system. So I'm going to stop the video now. Next time you'll see it, it'll have the new oil filter in, um, probably the wipers done and a few other bits and bobs. Sorry if this sounds rushed, but my dad's way doing MOT and I'm going to try and utilise this free hour that I've been allowed to have, try and get as much as I can done to the car. I am going to try and work late and do a few other bits and bobs, but my priorities really are wanting to try and get home uh, tonight because the, today's Wednesday. Tomorrow night I've got to get my son. Friday night I've got to put the caravan out and hooked up and everything. And then Saturday, up early hours, because uh, I'm going, like I mentioned, to a car show, uh, Fury's driving one. If anybody's interested, but it's pointless to say anything about this because this won't be uploaded until well after them dates. So I'm not going to go into too much detail. I'll, well, I'll probably do some separate video while I'm there. So I want to end this here and they'll come back to you when I've done a few of the jobs. Just an update on the Leon. Uh, time's getting away. It's like six o'clock. So again, been non stop. So we'll go around, start the front, a few things that I've done. So. I was going to do the upgrade side light bulbs, but I'm missing the one, and I don't know where it's went. Uh, so that's going to have to remain, I'll have to buy some more. So, I've already discovered the dip beam and the main beam have got Osram Nightbreakers in already, so happy days on that. Uh, the side lights are looking a bit burnt out and dull, so I'm going to get some nice white Osram or Philips LED side lights. I've got the chrome look indicator bulbs to go in there, but to be quite honest, I can't be bothered stripping all this out to just change the indicator bulbs. I'll wait until I've got the side lights to go in, so that can wait till another day. So what we've done under here, high flow air filter in, don't quote us on that, I just had one, so it's gone in, it's cost us nothing. Took the math out, incredibly clean, but I've cleaned it anyway. New pollen filter, which I'm going to get some new clips like this from uh, Volkswagen when I get time. So that's new pollen filter, new air filter. Oil and filter's been done. Brand new, genuine, 540PD oil gone in. Happy days. Screen wash topped up with the uh, advanced Halfad stuff. I don't usually recommend Halfads, but the screen wash is great. New fuel filter. Antifreeze refreshed and to the right level because it was slightly too high. Check the antifreeze. I was this big like um, like sound deadening thing on here, which was just falling to bits and dropping all over. I've took that off and just put it in a bin to be honest, because it it doesn't really do anything. And all it's going to do is fall into bits of the engine, which is exactly where we don't want it. Done a pressure test on the air conditioning. That is running absolutely perfect. I have got an auxiliary belt ordered for it, as well as all the cam belt when I'm going to sort things out because it's like I've mentioned, it's a shame. It's been £415 spent getting the cam belt done on it. But there's a hole in the cover at the back. But I've discovered it's the back and plate cover. So I don't know if that's to be uh, thought about. And I'll see what I'm going to do with that one. Again with the EGR, I was debating deactivating it. But I may just leave it be. Um, to be honest, I don't know yet. We'll we'll see. I don't even know if it's been mapped out when it was remapped. Um, that's pretty much under here what I've been getting on with. 
just to show you. I'm going to get on, put a bit of polish on it and that, and there's a few nasty stone chips like here uh, I'm going to get the touch-up pen on too. I might put a layer of polish on it. As you know, obviously, new tyres. And now my OCD can rest nicely now. We've got the bent wiper blade. See how the wipers, like a banana, it's actually bent. It doesn't look bent until you lift it off the screen. You see? It just matches in now so it doesn't catch the bottom. That's how these should be. And obviously, the driver's one with the, the spoiler on. So that's that done. From the back, what I've been on with here is a new Bosch wiper. Again, genuine Bosch. And something else just which was bugging us with my OCD, it's got the original Cupra exhaust on, not modified or nothing, totally original, and I've put a bit of metal polish on those, and they have come up lovely, looking, in my opinion, as it should do. And I am actually was going to faff around with the exhaust, going to leave it be totally factory, as it should be. So that's what I've done up to now. I've got a few other little bits I'm going to do tomorrow which I'll add it into another video. I want to have a look around this timing belt area, um, see what, see if I can sort something with this hole, assess the sump, how bad the leak is, again with that, since I've just put new oil in, something, for the minute, like I've said, I'm already, you've seen the money I've spent on parts here, uh, it's getting out of hand already, there's like two, two brand new tyres, oil and filter, air, well the air filter didn't cost us, fuel filter, pollen filter, what else we got in the boot, what I've just been spending on, oh the backing plates for the rear discs, um, I'll have to go and look at the parts to remind myself. Oh, yeah. Gear oil. That was a lot of money. Like I've said, the backing uh, plates this time and cover. I'm going to have to decide what I'm doing with that. Because that's money out uh, out of my bank. This intercooler seal. Like I said, the back and two backing plates for the back discs. That's definitely for another day. And I may see about fitting this if it's not seized. Uh, that's technically not a very long job. As you can see, to put a poly bush in there. The only thing what I'll assess with this is if it starts rattling the cart a bit. These haven't got as much give as rubber, obviously. So if I fit it and it starts flipping, sending vi more vibration through the car, I will be putting the original back on. But I do remember doing one of these and this bolt here snapped into the... Um, into the subframe, which we really don't want to be getting into that because that's just a whole world of pain we don't need. And I'm just looking at that bush, that all looks good. Happy days. So, yeah, a few other things to be getting on with. In fact, while I'm in here, like I've mentioned, uh, some rapid detailer, highly recommend that. Get on, clean the interior a little bit with some of that. But for now, I just want to get a dose of the super good. So I resin polish onto it and touch up a few of the marks on it. So I'm actually getting this out now so I don't forget. So I'll leave that there because the minute my dad gets back from the garage, that's a lovely background. That, 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 let's have a look. Looks a lot better on camera than it really is. You, you would think that was a flipping... Uh, <laughs> didn't realise that. Uh, so yeah, going to get on, probably just get a layer of polish onto it tonight and then um, sometime tomorrow, buff it off. Uh, so yeah that's it there's a few other bits naturally I want to get on with but one step at a time the main important things is I want to check that belt is okay um, I've got the tyres done it's just and I've done the full service on the engine everything was pretty much okay anyways but I'm just finicky like that I like things to be right so I'll leave this here and I'll come back to you when I've done a few more jobs on it Right, that's the Leon stripped down. I just thought I would show this, what I've done. Obviously, like I've mentioned, I'm suspicious of the broken timing case. Uh, and as I've shown you, this area here at the back, I thought was part of the top cover. So I've got to actually send that back. Um, so it's the main backing case, which is broken down there, which unfortunately means all the timing belt off again, water pump out the whole shebang basically but what i wanted to do was just inspect because i'm not very trustworthy of who's done this because of the damage they've caused and various other issues on the car like the sump stripped and stuff but it is a deco belt i can tell by the color of the other side of it you can tell the tension has been changed but there was a bit of a leak from the pump down there which you probably can't see on camera uh so yeah for now i'm just gonna have to put that back on what i might do for now um because as I've mentioned, it's only done five, th not even 5,000 miles, and it was done in August last year, which obviously is less than a year ago, and it was like 415 quid. So I, I, other things I want to try and get on with with the car, but the main concern is something getting up there in the whole under tray the car's missing. So I'm going to probably price up an under tray, the fittings, and I think one of the side arch liners is damaged. 
and just see how much that is and it might be a better idea to get the under tray for it to stop anything from going up but we'll see that's on a different uh, day for now i'm going to put this back together uh, i'll just show you what i've what else i've done so get that top timing case back on i've got the intercooler pipe off and what i've done while i've been in here the egr valve was clogged up i've done my best to clean it out i'm just going to get them loose little bits out of there but so that that doesn't clog up again what i've done is i've just done a because I've, I've checked uh, it hasn't been mapped out blocked it off at this point just to stop any dirt getting in and the pipe where which goes onto it i've just found a nice little stainless steel bolt head to go in there to, to block it and believe it or not you'd think somebody had just put this here purposely for the job an unused little clip there so it just goes nicely out the way the engine cover covers all this over so now basically it's an agr delete without all the faff totally reversible totally invisible for an mot so happy days better miles per gallon quicker pick up and I, the reason i haven't actually removed the agr valve on these they're a pain in the arse to be honest with you um because the, the the main port is right underneath so you kind of just take them off easily um they're, they're quite a faff so I've, I've cleaned it as best as i can in situ and also deactivated it and because that pipe is blocked there'll be no engine management yes it does monitor the airflow on the MAF sensor on these but these are only something like a euro two or a euro three so they don't pick up um the the reduced uh, EGR flow to, to bring up a code. So happy days, that's all you need to do. I don't even know why people waste their time uh, removing these and putting the Allard um, delete kit in, because what you do when you do an EGR delete on these engines, the PD, is you delete the anti-shudder valve. That's this little valve at the back. Just like, just looks like a throttle uh, body on a, on a petrol. It's in here. See that little flap? And obviously if I just activate that on my finger, if you can see it, see it moving so if you delete the EGR valve on these you deactivate your anti shutter valve which means every time you, you turn the key off the engine rattles itself to bits which does the drew mass flywheel no good and if you ever find that you get a runaway um you struggle to shut them off so it's a really silly silly idea yes there's a valve that goes through like the the center of the hole which it would be absolutely marginal the amount of extra power you would get due to restricted airflow through an EGR. Just make sure it's clean, deactivate it. Happy days. I, I can't see the point in removing it. Uh, it would be lucky if it got you like a quarter of one brake horsepower. It would just be, it's just a total faff. And then it's a deliberate modification for an MOT, so it'll be a fail. And it's irreversible. So I don't see the point really. Just leave it original, disconnect the pipe. Happy days. On some of the later ones, the PD engines, when they went electronic, then you would get codes and stuff coming up. But yeah, I'll leave that here. We're going to get the timing case put back, get the boost pipe put back on. And what I'm going to do is stick it up on the lift, have a look to see if there's anything I can do with the under tree, with the, uh, where I could fix it. I don't even know how much they're going to be. I reckon probably silly money because for the last vehicle we did a transporter, it was touching nearly 300 quid, I think, for a few under trays on it. So god knows with one of these you never know i might get a shock that might be reasonable but i doubt it um what we've got in the boot again while it's on the lift i might quickly change the gear oil again because there's no under tray it'll be an easy job um yeah oh yeah the dog bone mount may or may not put that on we shall see if they're slack and that's it really that's all i'm getting involved with i'm not touching the brakes or nothing um so yeah gear oil that and I might put some of that land guard on underneath on a few areas, scrape but bits down where it's a bit crusty. But yeah, I forgot to mention as well, did a full uh, super resin polish on it last night. I think that's come up really nice, so it's got like a layer of protection on. Doesn't really give it justice when it's stuck in the garage, but I'll show you it better outside. So I'll leave that there, we'll get it built up. I'm just trying to go along with what I've done to it. Obviously, you know I've got new tyres on and the white as you've seen all that last night. So I'll come back to you soon when it's up on the lift and I'll show you when I've done a few jobs, like the gear oil, things like that. So I'll catch you soon. Just on doing the last few things to the Leon. This is the intercooler pipe here. You've got to be careful with these. You've just got to pull the clip down and slot them out. And that's the new seal I've just put on. As you can see, the old one, you've just got to use a little pick. Be careful not to damage the actual pipe work. That's the old one. It was get the, all the edges of it were getting flattened. Uh, they're not cheap, like they're nearly ten pound for them. 
and that's quite a few of them. So that's a new one on, smear a clean oil on, and then it just pops into place. But there's a reason why that's left off, is we've just dropped the gear oil, as you can see. It's pretty black, and that's only 50,000 mile, and that's why you need to change this on these. Remember, top tip with the with any gearbox, make sure you check that your filler point can be slack and it's not seized before you take the drainer out. So that's slack, that's been drained. Now it's just a case of putting the fluid in. I had a look at this dog bone mount and they seem rather tight. I'm going to leave well alone on those for a day. Uh, not worth really for what benefit you would get from it. Uh, I wouldn't personally change that unless I had a one, which I did. Uh, so that pipe's just to get slot back in. The new gear oil, which I'll show you down here. I'm just letting it heat up in the sun of what little sun there is the day. It's the proper. This is exactly what you would get from Volkswagen, Audi. Right to the dealer spec, all the Volkswagen specs. Specialist uh, 75W, and I've got it in my little homemade oil filler because you need to get that in through the spout and squeeze it until it obviously starts fill, uh, coming out because obviously that's your fill plug as well as your check level. Once it starts to dribble out of that, you know that it's uh, full. You need a specialist tool for these, they're like a torque, but they've got like an indentation, a security uh, hole in it. I'll just find what I've done with that uh, other plug and I'll show you. I think it was, ah, this is it here. As you can see, they were a specialist uh, item. So I'm going to clean that up and put it back on. So I'll leave that here for now. Uh, there's not really any point in me filming, showing us putting some oil in and popping a pipe back into place. Um, I might get back to it if I decide to scrub a little bit of the surface rust off and spray a little bit of Langard uh, on, the, on the underbody just because I've got it here, and it's quite uh, decent stuff to work with, and it's uh, I may as well put a little bit on while I've got time. So I might catch you back on that one later. Right, bit of work on the Langard. I just thought I'd show you Langard protection. We've already done a video on this on the L200. I'm gonna show you on this one. This stuff's fantastic. The bottles are there, and we did a full L200 on that. So this will easily do a car. It's basically a long-lasting rust protective. I've already, got, if you want to go through it, have a look. I've already done a video. It can withstand 300 psi jet wash pressure, 450 degree temperature heat. So, this is a before, and we'll do an after. And no, this car's not in a bad way. That's just generally what most 20-year-old Nelly cars look like. So that's how it looks now. And I've just did a little bit of testing on this, and that's what it looks like when it's applied. It's like a sort of a shiny colour. It's more, it's an invisible kind of protectant. But it does obviously work. So, this is a bit of a before. And we'll do an after when it's done. And we'll see what we think of it. And we're mainly going to douse around all this back axle area. Down into here. And I want to keep a little bit left over. Because on the front arches, as we all know, this is one of my next jobs when I get more time. I'm going to drop these inner liners down and get the pieces of sponge out which rot away the wings if somebody hasn't already done that and while it's down we're going to spray a bit of that inside of the inner wings as well um, oh yes and as I've, as I've already told you got these new Rodex tyres which I'm really impressed with um, the back ones are worse than I thought and I haven't only just noticed when I've got it on the lift have you seen the state of that cracking in there I'm not happy driving this car with me son in the car um, so unfortunately it's another basically turned into quite an expensive job but they are nasty nasty deep cracks if i don't know if you can see into those but uh they are not good that's about ready to blow out that one and as you can see the other side are all starting to go and to be quite honest i think it'll look nicer with four matching tires as well so that they'll be getting done tomorrow and i'm leaving on saturday so it'll have four nice new tires fully serviced all the work you've seen is due to it uh new gearbox oil the sumps, the only thing I need to look at in this time and cover as well is something I need to look at. But the leak's not too bad, but we'll leave that for now. So I'll come back to you when we've applied the Langard, mainly around all the subframe as well. It's going to get put onto there and all these pipes which rot on them. Uh, so yeah, come back to you soon. Right, so that's the Langard applied. And I must say, I feel totally fine after doing that. If I'd done that with wax oil, I would be absolutely up the eyes and, and oil, like oil all over my face. The compressor would have been gone. Uh, would have been, you know, it, it really does take it out you're doing those jobs. 
I'm not saying this stuff, this is more like a watery, oily texture over the thick, gooey stuff, what wax oil is like. So, but at the end of the day, in my opinion, if there's a layer of protection, whether or not it's thick clag, which can come off in chunks, or a more of a penetrating fluid like what this is, which goes into the metal, I suppose as long as it's creating a barrier, it does the same job, and this stuff's not cheap, so the, the must. I'm going to have a look on some videos. It's got to have a good write-up. So here we go. That's it all done. And they say you can put it on the exhaust, uh, on a diesel, it ain't going to get past 450 degrees on this back exhaust, especially one with no DPF. So I've done what they've said. You can go on the exhaust. It's on the shockers. All on the back axle. I've left a little bit left in the can because I'm going to do some of the injection into the box sections. And like I've mentioned, I want to take the inner liners off and uh, spray a bit inside of those at a later date. Uh, but, there, you know, it's, it goes on so easily. It's everywhere, all underneath. Tank straps, and it clearly I haven't sprayed a plastic tank. Along the bottom edge of the sills, all over the front subframe. Up onto these power steering pipes, which quite often rot badly. It's just starting to dry there now on the front. I mean, it dries, I think, totally invisible. You can see, obviously, on the floor where it's dropping. You know, I've put it on thick. I haven't put it on liberally, so to speak. It's, it's gone on how it should be. Up in all these cavities up here. Don't know if you can see much on the camera. Um, but, you know, I've done the whole lot. We'll just have to see how it um, dries and how it fares, really. But, you know, for the money they charge for it, it's... You know, it's certainly not cheap. So we'll have to just see. I just thought I'll put that one in there. And there's a couple of other bits and bobs. In fact, I'm trying to work out what I've got left to do to it. Um, no, I'll leave that one here now. So I'll finish this one on the section of the Leon. And I'll wait until I do other bits and bobs. Because it's probably getting into quite a lengthy video now. So if you've enjoyed it, please hit the like. If you've got any questions about anything you've seen us do or used, any products I've used... Leave a comment, that's what, what it's here for. And if you haven't already done so, hit the subscribe. And I'll catch you next time, because I've got plenty more to do to this car. Hopefully now I'm getting on top of the bigger jobs. Uh, I've got a CV boot to do, but apart from that, we can start getting into some more fun stuff, you know? Like, uh, I don't know, I was going to do the exhaust, but it's original. But I have a think. Uh, you guys put your suggestions, what should I do? No, I'm not going to lower it or slam it. It's staying 100% original. I might do a few little mods, which are you know, kind of more mild and uh, not in your face, but let us know what you think I should do to it. So I'll catch you in another video. Bye.